Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Realtors Win Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Rendleman, where realtors are always winning. This is a spinoff of People Win Podcast, but specifically made for realtors. Since I've been in real estate now for over a decade, and I've been a realtor for over a decade, and I've made seven figures as a realtor, I feel exceedingly passionate about helping other realtors not just make seven figures, but actually enjoy doing it and learning how to create passive income as a realtor because being a realtor really gives you a lot more opportunities than somebody that doesn't have a real estate license to invest in real estate and make just boatloads of cash. Okay, are you excited about that? Because if you're not, you're in the wrong podcast. You need to find some other person talking about real estate stuff because my passion is helping Realtors love what they do and make really good money. And there's so many opportunities for you and for me. And today, guys, I want to help you guys as a buyer's agent think about for a second how you could possibly make more money by giving the buyers the number one thing that they want. The number one thing, the most critical thing that you as a buyer agent can give a buyer. And if you can hit this bullseye, you can command pretty much any commission you want within the realm of price elasticity. If I had a rubber band here today, price elasticity is stretching the rubber band on what you can get paid until it snaps. At a certain point, people will stop paying. But if you if you walk into a meeting and uh, you're talking about commissions for selling some kind of product, in this case, your services to a buyer or a seller, and they sign the paperwork saying, wow, that's it? That's all your commission? Chances are you, you, you left money on the table. And if you want to leave money on the table, that's fine, right? That's fine. I, I, I don't, uh, I'm not here to tell you what you should charge people and, uh, you know, People are obviously, um, you know, like uh, the relationships are the critical thing in business, right? So, like, you never want to burn a business relationship over money. But in a capitalistic society, you and I have this thing called price elasticity where we can stretch the rubber band a little bit if we offer buyers what they really want. If you can hit the bullseye, you can charge pretty much any commission you can within the realm of price elasticity, okay? Are you tracking with me? Does this make sense? So, and, and all the more relevant is this whole conversation when we consider that commissions are no longer necessarily guaranteed from a list, listing agent. Nor should they be. That's such a stupid thing in my opinion, right? That the seller should pay the buyer agent a commission to me is, is kind of silly, all right? I, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying I don't necessarily know where that came from or why we do it that way. But it is what it is, Okay. You can fight me on that. I'm not going to die on that hill. It's just my opinion, okay? I've, I know very successful people that very much disagree and think there should always be a co-op, think that real estate should be more like socialistic where there's just one fee that buyer agents get paid and everyone gets paid the same, okay? I, I think it's silly. I, I just don't like that model, but that's me. But you can take what I'm going to say today and do whatever you want with it, but I'm going to tell you the number one thing that buyers want. You guys ready? Actually, let me ask you this. Pop quiz. What's the greatest fear of a buyer? What do you think? I think the greatest fear of a buyer is missing out on the perfect home. That's what I think. I think that the buyer really, more than anything else, is afraid of missing out on that perfect home. Now, if they're an investor, you say it slightly differently. They're afraid of missing out on the perfect deal. That's right. But it all is, if people are shopping for real estate, they're afraid they're going to miss as an investor, the opportunity of a lifetime as a buyer, the home of the dreams. So what is the most important thing to, prov to provide a buyer? And the answer is homes. They only need one home, usually, right? Unless they're a serial buyer and they're investing or something like that. But like most of the time, it's just one home. But wouldn't you agree that if you had a buyer you're working with right now, uh, and you had a home for them that was like an eight on a scale, one to 10, okay? And you had two other homes that were like a seven and a nine. So you had three homes between seven and nine, okay? Um, and you told the buyer to pick one. Wouldn't you agree that they would probably be happier if you had five of those to choose from that were like nines and tens, 
I mean, if you're asking me, I don't want like 50. Like I don't, I don't need like, I don't want to be overwhelmed with options, but that's not usually how it is with buyers and homes. They don't usually like 50 homes. If you do, you, you need to get more like honed into what the buyer is actually looking for, right? If they, every home is like a 10, they're like, yeah, I'll buy that, I'll buy that, I'll buy that. Yeah, that one looks good. Like they're probably not even serious. But like I'm saying, I as a buyer, when I buy real estate, I want to know what all the options are that really match my criteria. And unfortunately, many times, buyer agents, you guys, only provide homes that are publicly listed. The next step up is they provide homes that are privately listed. That could be through their network, through their brokerage, through special top agent exclusive programs or whatever, through a pocket listing they have that's coming soon. But you want to know what the level above that is? Providing buyers homes that are not listed by anybody. They're not even, the seller hasn't signed an agreement with nobody. They, they are just homes, not listed in any way, shape, or form. And you bring those types of homes, if they are a good fit for the buyer, you will become invaluable. 99% of realtors don't do this. Why? Because they don't know how to get paid. And it's a lot of work. And they don't know how to make it happen. And so as a result, it's not common that a buyer agent is going to go chasing after homes that aren't listed in some way, shape, or form. They're either going to be listed publicly or privately. But it's very, it's, very, it's very few and far between that a buyer agent will bring a home to the table that is not listed at all. But that, my friends, is when you become indispensable. That is what buyers really want. They want access to homes that no one else can show them that are a good fit matching their criteria because chances are they've already seen the home that you have sent them. They can already find it. And it, it's just every day it's like becoming easier and easier for buyers to get access to stuff that's even privately listed. So if you're going to add more value than your competitor as a buyer's agent, learn to show them, here it is, Every home imaginable. Every home imaginable. And if you can show the buyer every home imaginable that meets their criteria, you will become invaluable. So my question is, do you know how to do that? Do you know how to take a buyer out and the buyer points and says, that street on the corner, is that for sale? And you're like, oh, that one, uh, 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 yeah, that one's not for sale. I didn't see that. Sorry, I can't help you with that one. They're not selling their home right now. Or could you say, yeah, let's stop. I'll go talk with the seller right now and uh, we'll get you inside to see the home. So if you can do that, you can charge a higher commission. I promise you. You're worth it. Look, I'm an investor. Okay, I have real estate in multiple states. When I call a realtor on Zillow, my first question to them is, do you have access to homes that are not listed either publicly or privately? Do you know how to get access to those homes? Do you know how to show me those homes? Do you know how to help me buy those homes? And if they fumble on their answer and, and, and they don't have a clue how to do that, it's on to the next guy. Because I need somebody that knows how to be creative in finding deals, especially when the market has so few options. Now look, I'm not saying that every time you're going to find your client a home that's not listed, right? Like there's no novelty per se in finding a home that's not listed just for the sake of saying, I found you an unlisted home. But the novelty is being able to present the maximum amount of options for the buyer. That's different. That's a unique selling proposition. And if you can tell that to buyers and you actually have a strategy and a way of doing that that works, you will be paid a premium. No questions asked. Try it. If you don't believe, you, you, you know, before you dismiss what I'm saying, try it. Put it to the test. See if that's not the facts. If that doesn't come true, if that isn't the reality, if that doesn't materialize exactly the way I'm saying it. So, guys, I hope this is helpful for you buyer's agents. It's what I think is the number one desire and need of a buyer are homes and not the ones that are listed, the ones that are not even yet listed. Okay, that's the highest level of buyer agency as it relates to finding homes, in my opinion. When you have the skill set where you can go after any and every home. And if you can do that, my friends, 
then there's never a shortage of inventory. Think about that. Guys, this is Realtor Win Podcast. Go to realtorswinpodcast.com. Get more helpful tips. Direct message us. Let us know if we can help you. If you'd like more information on this, reach out to us. We'd be happy to give it to you. And until next time, signing off. Thank you, guys. Talk soon. Peace.